All right, how many of you all have taken the class, right? You all took the class, right? Now, you know, in the first session of the class, I gave material. And why did I do that in the first session of the class? Because in the class, I wanted people to understand a most important concept that makes you extraordinary, that allows you to overcome every obstacle and allows you not to be deterred, stopped, obstructed, or, or brought down. And everybody, when they saw it, they were like, yes. And they didn't continue it. Now, what, we, what, what I did one time is that um, in my house, I was doing some teaching. And I had a pan. And I put something in it to, to burn. And what happened is the pan got so hot, it burned the rug, right? So we bought another rug and put it on top, right? You know, you know what I'm talking about? Why does that people go, what's that rug doing there? I said, well, it's there. It's there. <laughs> but really, the rug is there to cover the what? The burn. the burn, right? And if I burn that rug, I just put another rug on. No, that's not the way you work this, right? You need to repair the what? Or replace the carpet. Is that making sense? All right. So what we've done mentally is that we don't repair what's underneath. We just cover it. And we cover it with knowledge. And we don't repair what's the problem underneath. And what happens is, because we did that the first time, we're going to do it again, and we're going to do it to this group, and then we're going to keep piling on layers rather than repairing the first thing in the first place. Does that make sense? So people have these, these, these problems, and they cover them over and pretend like they, don't, they didn't happen, and then they do it again and do it again. And it keeps, and pretty soon the whole thing falls through. You can't layer you must remove entirely. Is that making sense? So I'm going to explain why the brain does what it does. And when you under, and it's very important that you understand it, because otherwise the word of God is just going to be very superficial. It won't be as beneficial. So you, it, the object is to do the word that Jesus did, everything he said that he did, you want to do it too, but you got to do it the way he does. You've got to undermine, you've got to remove all that which is below. Same with the Apostle Paul. So their teaching there are extremely valuable. And it's not, well, I've read in Psychology Today or whatever. That's irrelevant because everything that's of any benefit is in the Word. And people are just taking extracts and becoming rich off of the Word of God. That's not very good. That's not wise, nor is it beneficial. Because when you do it God's way, not only do you benefit, but so does everybody. What else? And it's not short term. It's like consistent. So in order to really repair something, you have to go down. You can't just, if you've got a big piece of rust, just painting over it, what does it do? On your car, if you've got rust, you don't just paint, I'll just paint over it. That's not, you're just going to have it get worse. And that's what people do with their hearts. It's what they do with their souls. It's what they do with their mind. And you've got to stop it, okay? Because it doesn't benefit anybody. So, Father, thank you for the greatness of your word, and thank you for this honor and privilege of teaching the precepts of it that we begin in the class and as we begin this day and this year, understanding those principles and applying them the rest of our lives, that we may truly walk in the greatness of your truth and be set free from everything that holds us back, to be able to walk in your shadow with your hand, just as your firstborn from the dead are risen and return, Lord Jesus, your anointed. Okay, so I'm going to have to start back with the real basics here, right? For those, you, th just because you saw something, oh, yeah, I know it. Don't do that. Don't do that. Because then you're just blanketing over. The object is, how many have done mistakes? All right? How many have never done the same mistake twice? Well, no, I didn't. All right? All right, if you've never done the same mistake twice, then you don't need to be here. If you're the kind of person that made a mistake and make it again and make it again, even and, and it tears you up every time you do it, and you still do it again, you still do it again, you're like, ah, and every time these things happen, you're just like, oh, you keep doing that, there's a problem. There's a major problem, and you have to comprehend what's going on. So please, with all your heart, pay attention to what I'm teaching. I'm giving you the keys of life, okay?
So let's begin. So this is the true way of life. It's not a joke. It's not some, some party favor. It's not some uh, secret society. It's just the way of life. All life. No exception. So what is this premise? The first thing we got to understand is what is. Now, what is. Now, is is, is, is an interesting concept because you go, what is this? No, 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 no. What is is when you and I talk we have a concept if I say if I say apple what comes to your mind an apple right and I go banana what comes to your mind banana all right I go gulaman what comes to your mind nothing nothing except you I understand that but it, nothing comes to mind you don't know what that is you hear the sounds you can repeat them but there's no image. So therefore, Gulaman is not existent. It's not one of your is's, you know? Like what is in your life, what exists. Gulaman is not one of them. Now, if I say, give me a characteristic of a bird. Give me a characteristic of a bird. Birds do what? Okay, birds fly. Now, there's a problem with that. Because where you live, it does. But in the Antarctic, it doesn't. All birds swim. So if you said that to someone from the Antarctic, they go, huh? Because their birds don't fly. Their birds swim. So now if you make a statement, in your reality, birds fly. In their reality, birds swim or crawl along the ground and then swim. You see the problem? Because I have a reality, or they have a reality, and then we have a reality. But our reality is very local. It does encompass the greater reality that birds do. Not only do they swim, they also fly. And some don't fly or swim, they just walk. You know, when ostriches? Now, if you're from New Zealand and say, all birds fly, now you got a problem. What about that? That's a kiwi. What does it do? It doesn't do anything. It just walks. Right? What about the ostrich? Just, just, how about the emu? Cassowary. They don't fly. Now you got another problem, don't you? So if you're talking with a guy from New Zealand and you're talking to you and you're talking to a guy from Antarctic, we got some major conflicts here about what the word bird means. To them, a bird is, is either this big, right, or is like freaking this big. To you, it's a little sparrow. To freaking down in Antarctic, it's a penguin. You see the problem? So birds, just because you use it and you think it's what, you, what is real, and the person should automatically know, it's not true. Everybody has their own frame of reference. And your reference has to grow to encompass theirs. Or there's going to be conflict. So what is, we're going to be looking at this word. Hebrews 11, 6. <laughs> what does it say? But without faith. All right, and that's pistis. It is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God, God must believe that he is. All right, now there it is. You must, it's not believe. The word pistis is interesting because. It's the growth and development of an individual, as you already know, I've taught it many times, that that, but the first step, the first reality is they got to know that God is. He has to be in someone's reality. You can't fake it. You can't pretend. It has to be your reality or your development is savagely curtailed. All right. So let's look at this. We're going to try and understand this word is. We use it all the time. But we're not adding anything to it. We just, what is, it's like, what is this or that? Bring it into my, what you're saying is bring it into my reality. Whenever you say, what is this? You're saying, bring it into my reality. I don't, I've never seen this before. I don't know what this is. So we have to bring it into our reality. We say, what is this? But we're not, we're not talking about that. We're talking about just the reality itself, which the Bible calls heart. We just want to know what qualifies as being is 
in our, in our reality. All right? Is everybody with me on this? Please put your, be really wide awake on this. This is important stuff. Because unless you really like sorrow, unless you really like failure, unless you really like you know, tearing yourself up with everybody else. All right. So now let's look at a, a newborn babe. All right? There's more to him than just this part. There's more. Okay. So what is, is, what is a reality to this newborn babe? What, what does he know exists at this point? It's very limited, is it not? He doesn't really comprehend anything except that he knows, he, he knows touch, he knows smell, and he knows, he, he knows how to, what do you call that, um, breastfeed, right? Or whatever goes in his mouth that he gets nourishment from. And he knows discomfort. He's very limited in his, what is real to him. So what is is different to a newborn than it is to us. It's very, very what? Limited. He really knows absolutely what? Near nothing. Okay. Well, how about to this little guy? Does he have the same problem he does? No. He has increased in his perception of what? Reality. So his is, like he knows that these are blocks, and he's really mystified by them. Notice he's lost his shoes. They always do that. They always kick off their shoes. Remember, I'm baking, barefooted. And if they can take off everything else, they will too. All right. So what is to a toddler? Okay. What is to a six-year-old? These are all different levels of what? Is, right? Different levels of reality. Everybody got that? Now, why is it that we have a reality? What makes a reality happen? That new, new, that new, new, that newborn babe, okay, no, 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 no. <laughs> that newborn babe gets to learn the face of its mother. If you, like someone did a terrible joke on a baby, they would always go, and the baby would go back to him, right? And they taught the baby to do that. So every time you walk up to the baby and go, hi, baby, it goes, that, I mean, it was terrible. The baby learns to smile. It mimics the first thing it sees so that you will love it because you feel an attachment to it. Then it forces itself into your reality. So I'm serious. They really did do that. And they can't get the baby to undo that, but that's okay. So everybody has, so how do you get something to be an is, to become part of your reality? The key is when the baby first sees mommy, it associates mommy with protection, with care, with food, and with amusement, right? So it mimics everything mommy does because it gets benefits when it does. Babies aren't stupid. They know that if, they, if, you, smile, if you make that facial expression, they'll make that facial expression. And they get a hug, or they get tickled, or they get... They, that's what babies know. That's all they know. They know that if they mimic what they see, then they will get special attention. They'll get all their needs met. And if that doesn't work, then they cry. Does that make sense? That's the limit to a baby. But as they venture out, as they venture out into outside the crib and start checking everything out, they see something and they touch it and they're looking at it. What are they doing? They're making, they're expanding their what? Reality that never existed before. You ever notice how kids are always fascinated by the dumbest stuff? They just sit there and stare at it, right? Because they've never seen it before. It's now becoming a part of their what? Reality. Wow. And then they'll see that and they'll watch it. And of course, the first thing they want to know is, what does it feel like? Then they want to know what it tastes like. And into the mouth it goes. Because babies sense by their what? Their taste. They're dominant tasters. Hearing is, is secondary, but seeing and tasting is primary. All right, so it touches the leaf, it examines the leaf, and immediately a duplicate of that goes into the brain. The brain actually makes a copy of that very thing. You understand? It makes a copy. It's not, ex it's not the same thing. It's a visual and tactile reproduction in the brain. So when it touches it again or sees it, 
it will what? Remember it. If it does not do this, it will not remember. It won't be a part of its what? Reality. Now, that will work. But another aspect is we learn what is from what? Instruction. But you have to have a very good teacher or, some, or, the, or, the, or the student has to have a very uh, high level of conceptuality. They have to imagine. And that imagination has to be as real as real can be. That's why most instruction is done with stories. Like I started off with the story about me burning my carpet, right, to illustrate something. We define what is by what we have what. This is making sense so far. So here are two boys. They're going to use one word, but each one has different what? Experiences. The subject matter is dog. Now, he's looking at him weird because he rides his dog. And he sleeps with his dog. What's the problem? And he's looking at him like, dude, you are losing it, man. Well, his dog looks like that. And his dog is a little wawachi, a chihuahua, right? A little, little thing, right? So even though they're talking the same word, they got totally different what? Images. Well, how'd they get these images? Because that's his dog. He grew up on that dog. He rode that dog. He never rode this dog. He carried the dog. And if he says, I carry my dog, he goes, dude, you're strong because he can't lift him. <laughs> you see how the miscommunication can evolve? Because they have different what? Experiences. All right. Two girlfriends are sitting down. I'm, I'm assuming they're girlfriends, right? And she says, my gerbil died. Well, if you don't know what a gerbil is, what do you think it is? Something that's alive that died. Well, she doesn't know what a gerbil is. But what does she know? Well, she knows what a hamster is. And she knows what a mouse is. And she knows what a rabbit is. But she has no clue what a gerbil is. And seriously, some people never knew a gerbil existed. It's not part of their what? It's not a mouse. It's not a hamster. And sure as heck ain't a rabbit. So what is it? It's a gerbil. And seriously, people don't even knew, never knew a gerbil existed. Not part of their reality. All right. So she goes, my gerbil died. And she's like, I have no idea what you're talking about. None. We, if we have not experienced it, it, does, it doesn't really what? Exist. Now, she says, my rabbit died. She had a rabbit. She goes, yeah, I know. I have my rabbit. And they both sit there and talk about their rabbit, right? Or someone says, oh, my mouse died. Well, she goes, yeah, I had a mouse, too, and he died. Or I had a hamster, and I had a hamster. And they can relate. But you say gerbil, and they'll go, well, I don't know. What the heck are you talking about? A person, you know, our, our macaw passed away, 35 years of having this little monster. I mean, I love him. He's my friend. But um, people sit there and say, I had a, I had a parrot, too. I go, yeah, okay, you had a parrot? What kind? He goes, you know, a little blue and green parrot. I'm like, not the same. No, 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 no. Macaws are like, Pfft. they're big birds who think they, they own the house. Uh, anyway. But little gerbil, little, not gerbils, <laughs> little blue and green parrots, they don't do that. But they're really, you know, you, when you have an intelligent pet, there's challenges. But anyway, besides pets, we're talking about what's, like, a macaw is real in my reality, right? But is a macaw a macaw in your reality? Do you know what it takes to raise a macaw? Do you know what it is to handle a macaw? Do you know what it is to to make him do what he's supposed to do and not what you, he wants you to do, right? The very strong-willed bird. Beside the point. But see, I say, I say a military macaw or I say a blue and gold. You're like, what's that? You mean like a little green-headed parrot? No, totally different. Does that make sense? Because everybody has, and each one of you have a different reality than I have because you have different what? 
experiences, right? And only your experiences are your reality. Got it? So when you talk to people, don't say anything until you understand where they're coming from. What is their reality? What experiences are they coming from? Or they will not understand anything you're saying. All right. So looking at a child, right? Ever lose something in the house? Have ever lost anything in the house, right? If you are in good luck, you are in good fortune if you got a five-year-old. You are very fortunate. Why? Because a five-year-old has explored the whole house. Under things or behind things. It knows everything. <laughs> and that's their what? Reality. They haven't been to school yet. So they haven't experienced anything outside the house. The house is their world. And if you want to know if you lost something, they know exactly where it's at. Ever lose something in the house? Ask your five-year-old. A five-year-old, his whole world is the house. So he's explored it. He's gone through everything, all the cabinets. He's gone. He's went in the closets. He's went under the couch. He knows everything. He didn't move anything. He just wanted to see what's there. So if you look, ask your five-year-old, he will know where it is because everything in the house is a part of what is in his what? World. Everybody got that? Now, am I giving you a key to control your life? Yes. Because when he reproduces the world, right? He reproduces it. What if something changes in the house? Then he changes his what? His perception of what? Reality. Got it? And then he draws from that new perceived reality. And he increases. He can't, if things change in the house, you got to realize if things change, he'll be wrong. And he has to adapt his perception of reality. Okay. He has literally recreated the whole house in his mind, right? Do we have that as an adult? Yeah, we do. But a five-year-old is restricted, limited, until he goes to school. He's limited to the house. You and I have the same ability, but his is more exact. If you and he were blindfolded, who would bump into more things to get somewhere in the house? You would. You understand? If you don't believe me, go home, put on a blindfold, and try and walk around. You'll bump into everything. And I personally experienced this. Don't talk about the, the boo boo on my nose, okay? All right. <laughs> I practiced that, trying to remember where things were in the dark. I go, this should be here. Nope, it's not there. Okay. And this should be, nope, that's not there either. Where, okay, where is it? You understand? You've got to be able to work on your memory. What is? And if you think you got the house down pat, ha, 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 blindfold time. Try it out. What is wrong with us adults? Well, nothing. Our reality, our is, extends beyond the house and includes other houses and homes, right? Like you have your own house, right? But now you know where the bathroom is here, right? At least you all know where the bathroom is. Do you know where the vacuum cleaner is? Heck no, we don't know where that is. Do you know where the broom is? Nope, don't know where that is. Right? But you know where the bathrooms are. So this house has become part of your what? Reality. Your house has not become part of my reality yet. Until you invite me over. Right? Then I'll be looking around at everything. <laughs> Does that make sense? Our reality, our is, extends beyond the house and includes other houses, our workplace, locations in the city and other cities, and maybe other countries. And we only got a little bitty brain to pack all this in there. So we have to kind of like shortcut everything. 
but a child only has the house. Our is, our adult reality, is literally a recreation in our mind of the world we have what? Experienced. If you haven't experienced it, it does not exist. Got it? All right, what about feeling of being lost, powerless, afraid? Why does that happen? Lost, what does that mean? It's when we have gone beyond the limits of our mental constructed reproduction of the world. You'll notice how many here came here, remember when you came here for the first time? How long did it take you? It took you a long time. But how long did it take you this time? It didn't seem like nothing at all, right? <laughs> what happened? It became a part of your what? The reason it takes so long is you have to construct it in your mind how to get there. You have to reproduce this place in your mind and become a part of your reality. Now, my neighbors aren't a part of your reality, but this house is. If I say, okay, well, what's above me? I don't know. All right, what's the house over there? I don't know. What's the house over there? I don't know. The only house you know that exists here is this house. Everything else is beyond your reality. Does that make sense? Now, well, how do you increase your reality? Go knock on my neighbor's door. Can I see your house? They may think you're weird, but at least you'll be increasing your what? I'm joking. Don't do that. <laughs> My neighbor like, what, the hell? what kind of people you got there? All right. So lost is when we've gone beyond the limits of our mental constructed reproduction of the world. How many have been driving that which you're always familiar with and you get a detour? So you take the detour. All of a sudden, all right, where the hell am I? And then you turn around and you turn around like, oh, crap. How do I get back to where I was? Right? You stepped outside the limits of your what? Your mental map. And you have no idea how to get back. Do you understand? Now, to a child, that happens a lot because their world is really limited. So what do they do? They just plot down and do absolutely what? Nothing, except put their thumb in the mouth. Adults do the same thing, except they bite their lip. Same thing. That's socially more acceptable than putting your thumb in your mouth. All right, which cannot neither be. All right, so what happened? All right, when he gone beyond the limits of our mental constructive reproduction of the world, our is, our limited, faulty image of reality, which cannot neither ever be a true representation of reality. Your perception reality can never be true because it's a reproduction. You understand? It can never be true because it's a what? A reproduction. If you're expecting your perception of reality to be right, you're going to have problems. You can never trust this thing that holds your ears from slapping together, the brain. Can't trust it. Always have backups. Always prepare. Because your assumptions are going to be wrong. Your judgment is going to be wrong. People say, why do you carry your Bible everywhere? <laughs> My backup. <laughs> I can always reference it. I have a day timer. I always write down everything that I do. If not, I have Patricia do it. Right? Does that make sense? I don't want, if I discover something, I grab my journal and add where I made my mistakes and what I should have done correctly. Got it? And then I re-image it in my mind. I redo the map in my brain. All right, have you ever had fear, anger, frustration, disappointment, all other negative emotions? Why? Why? Why do you have these things? Because are the responses to our mental reproduction of reality. Our internal map of the world, our perceived is being destroyed by what? Reality. You think it's what the way things are always going to be, 
and you get smacked in the face with reality. You always thought it was going to be like this, and you, I mean, you, and all of a sudden, bang, you get smacked. If you're angry, fearful, frustrated, all of these or all combinations of disappointment, it's because your perception of reality was incorrect, and reality hit and, and knocked you down. Am I right or wrong? We never stop to think about what's going on on the inside. And that's all the Bible's talking about. What's going on on the inside? Because if you have it on the inside, you can withstand anything. But if you don't, and you have this stupid, ridiculous, simplified version of God in the Bible, you're going to get clobbered. You're going to get run over like a steamroller. Reality is going to crush you. How many of you ever have been, been full of fear? How many of you have ever been angry, frustrated, disappointed? Why? Because you have a concept of reality, and it's not going your way. What is your way? It's that map you've created in your mind of how things should be. And that's not reality. This is why, with all authority and every ounce of strength, as, as the master of our is, we command no in the face of our crumbling perceived reality. What's the problem? What's going on in here? You said this is what it is. This is what it is. And when reality hit, it wasn't what it was. We perceived, we adjusted, we made a copy that was not true to reality. And it got crushed. Does that make sense? You can have two people agree on the same thing, yet they're perceiving it totally wrong, and it's all surface. And, you're, and you, can, you have the experience and you know what it's talking about or the situation, but they see it from their perspective and they're not going to change. Even if it destroys them, they will not change. You see the problem? Be careful how you perceive reality. There's the wisest man that ever lived. You ever hear of Socrates? Right? All right, how many know Socrates? You are old. Okay. <laughs> Me too. All right. But Socrates had a statement that says, what I know is one thing. That is, I know what? Nothing. His map of reality was always adjustable, always malleable. He was never shocked. He was never scared. He was never afraid. He kept that perfect what? Balance. Adapted to reality. He didn't try and force reality to adapt to him. You don't want to be in this state. Children go into temper tantrums and cry because their reality is not coming to pass. Pistis is growth and development. That's all it is. Pistis is what? Growth and development. It has nothing to do with faith. That's a terrible translation done in the Latin Vulgate, in the very first translation in Latin, and it ruined all subsequent translations. It's referring to life. Life is not born as an adult. I'm here, right? It doesn't work like that. You don't jump. My, if my mother had to carry me until I was 30 years of age, we'd have a problem, right? I start off as an idiot, imbecile, naive, totally devoid of any concept of reality, and this little package, and had to grow to this. So how many mistakes am I going to make? A lot, right? How many have made zero to no mistakes in your life? If you think that, you really got a messed up reality. 
You got carpets upon carpets upon carpets covering holes upon holes. And you're going to be doing the same thing over and over again. Am I making, does this sound stupid or does it make sense to you? All right. So was this tree originally that big? How big was it originally? That little dot right there. And what happened? It grew. So what are these? This is each year, each cycle of the seasons. And you can tell how old a tree is by counting the what? The rains. We have the same thing. There was a time where you wore a baby's clothes, outfit. Time where you wore a toddler outfit. Then you wore what? A skirt or trousers, depending on your gender, right? Then you wore what? You see what I'm saying? It got different. The outside became different. And the inside became what? Different. Is this making sense? So the tree of life is a tree. It's, it's not talking about an actual tree. It's that growth and what? Development. You can't just jump into adulthood from six years of age. It doesn't work. You have to grow to that. It's the growth and development. That's what pistis is. Proper and correct knowledge with experience of each rings of greater increase of reality produces a beautiful and strong life like a tree. If you get, you experience reality and it becomes greater and you experience more reality. I met a man who, who lived on a sailboat and his children had visited every country in Asia. They all spoke five languages. These are children. They could man the helm. They could do the rigging. They could do the repairs. It was, it was a husband and wife and their three kids. And I watched them. I knew them over a five-year period. And those kids were magnificent. You take them with you and they could speak, they could speak Spanish, English, Tagalog, Chinese, Japanese, Malaysian, <laughs> nonstop. You understand? So they had a magnificent exposure to what? Reality. And they could do more. They could accomplish more than anyone else. They weren't restricted. So how much reality does a newborn have? Can you say diddly squat? Right? <laughs> like, that's a real phrase in English. I know it sounds weird, but that's a real word. So he don't know much. Or how about the next level? Notice there's more exposure, more rings. And of course, a six-year-old, that's, that's a nightmare on two legs, okay? So our rings, now sometimes they get bent. Sometimes they get bruised. Sometimes they get burnt. These rings are depending on what happens in your life. That's why a perfect set of rings like this is not likely with a real tree. This looks like something that came out of a protected forest. But usually there's big dents, there's big holes, there's all kinds of things. Burns where forest fires came through. You understand? It endured. It became stronger, more capable. But in reality, when you look at a, a trough section of a trunk, you turn it over, you'll see that it went through hell. It went through dry seasons. It went through storms. It was a, You can see where bugs partially ate through, you can, and it survived and overcame it. So our whole life is like these rings of experiences, and they get dented, they get broken, they, and you need to repair them. Because she had us, like, you have a certain sense of what reality is, and, and then reality hurts you, and you're like, ah, so that's a dent, that's a bruise, that's a chop, that all these things happen to you. That's what makes your what? Reality. But that doesn't make it reality. It's your perception of it by your experiences. Is that making sense? Our rings of what is our reality are constantly being torn down and rebuilt as we increase in what truly is reality. I've seen this one guy, he's like in his late, late 20s, and, he's, and he says, hey, you know what, look how everybody's riding a, a, a skateboard, I'm going to do it. So he went and got a skateboard, broke his leg. First day, phew, bang, 
All right, what did he learn? <laughs> Looks like a piece of cake. I can do it. Broke his leg. First day. Then guess what happened the second day? Broke his arm. Second day he was on it. He didn't do it the first. He had to wait till his leg healed. Then he got back on it and broke his arm. What's the problem? He doesn't have a correct perception of what? And it's painful. Did he do the same thing he did before? No, he did something different. Bang. So how many of you ever learned how to ride a bicycle? Wasn't that a shock of reality? And people say, well, I'm going to put helmets on and I'm going to put on armor. What? He's just learning how to ride a bicycle. What are you doing? Pain is required to learn. No pain, no gain. So has this girl had a lot of pain? Yeah, you can see it. But she reinforced it. She brought it back up. Every person has that. Every person is different. And what's really devastating to one person could be nothing to another because of what they've already been through. It has no effect on none because of what they've already been through. Got it? Their reality is reinforced. They're stronger. They've already been through that or worse. How much of your what is isn't? So how much of your reality isn't reality? It's your fantastic imagination. You think that's the way things are, and they are not. How do you find out? How do you find out what's false and what's real? How do you find out what is your imagination and what truly is reality? You put it to the what? The test. All right? Can you in your mind right now go back to your home? All right? Close your eyes. Can, all right. Now, with your eyes closed, can you see where you came from? I'm not, not where you were born. I mean, when, where you slept last night. All right. You see it? What, can you walk through the front door? All right. Can you walk up to the closet? All right. Can you walk in the kitchen? All right. Now walk back in the bedroom. Did you make your bed? Can you see it? It's a mess, isn't it? <laughs> so how did you get to your house? How did you get to your house? Right? Now, how many think that what you just saw is reality? What if someone came in there and made the bed for you? Then when you came back, I'm like, all right, who made my bed, right? How many of you ever walked outside your house and your car was missing? Boy, that's a shocker, because you're expecting to go to work, and you walk out, okay, where's my car? Where'd I put it? It was there. <laughs> I got my keys. Where's my car? You ever had that happen? Now, when it happens to you twice, that really sucks. For me, three times was too much. So I will never lend out my keys anymore, my car. Because when you lend it out, people think you can borrow it again at any time. And the answer is no. You ask me each time. All right. Can you walk through your home in your mind? The answer is what? Yes. What is the, what's in the, clo the, the closets and cupboards? Now go back and go. Go back into your house. Go back into the closet. Open it up. What do you see? Uh... Uh, hmm. What's the problem? You, you don't know what's in there. All right, right. Let's go back to the bedroom, all right? You have a trust of drawers, right? Open up the first drawer. What's in it? Uh, name everything that's in it. Uh, hmm. Underwear, socks, what else? You don't wear underwear? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> That's right, you're married. It could be her underwear. Okay. <laughs> well, 
So you understand the problem is that we don't have a full, complete what? Perception reality. We re reproduce it in detail. How many walked in my house? Remember? I asked you, what's on the back wall? You're sitting. You walked in the house. You turned around, sat down. What's in the back wall behind you? No, 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 on the wall. Now, you see, we did it already, right? And, you, and, you, and we, you looked, I saw you. All right. But you see what I'm saying? You don't remember, even though I pulled this question on you before. And you didn't do anything. You just put something on top, and it fell away. You can't put it on top. You have to replace it. So when you walk in the door, you look at the wall, and it's there. And you see it. Now it's part of your what? Putting a, putting a patch is worthless. What's in the closets and cupboards? Haven't got a clue. Unless you went in there and get your coffee cup. And you'll, there's a coffee cup. What about the other shelves? Well, there's a coffee cup. What about the other shelves? I got my coffee cup. That's where I get it from. Right. What will happen if you are blindfolded and walk through your house using only your mental map? You think it's correct? Now, not, I'm not assuming that no one moved anything. If they did, you're going to be hurting your knees and your ankles. But just saying that nobody moved anything, how long before you bumped into something? Smacked into something? Three steps. Four steps. Three four steps. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that table was that sharp. <laughs> Does that make sense? So why do you make that reality that is so feeble and so weak and unreliable, your standard for judgment. It's not the reliable, it's not dependable. And people base their lives on it. And you can't do that. It's going to hurt you. Using only a mental map Will you have any difficulties? The answer is yes. All right? We are, we, our minds are so brilliant. Drive your car now with your mental map. I mean, after all, your perception of reality is so superior. Drive your car. Just blindfold and drive your car. How long do you think that will last before you customize the car? This is making sense. Using your mental map, your perception reality, your what is of how you drive to work, how many streets do you pass? And what are their names? Don't know. Your map's kind of like missing, like roads and streets and their names. If your mental map of what is your perceived reality is that accurate, then you should be able to drive your bl drive blindfolded, only driving by your mental map. To go to work, and will there be any problems? The answer is yes. It will be far worse than if you walked around your house blindfolded. Yet we trust our mental maps with our lives. Bad idea. All right, how many, when you're driving your car, know how fast you're going? You just know it. I'm right here. Do you know how fast you're going when you're driving your car? Do you know how fast you're going when you drive? Pardon? So, so without the speedometer, you had no clue that you were going 80 miles an hour. Pardon? No clue. Do you know when you're going 25 miles an hour? Wow. I don't think I want to drive with you. <laughs> you see a problem here. Because we got to be able to, we don't, we don't even know. If I was going to speed up going from here to that wall, I should have a sense if I'm traveling 25 miles an hour to where I'm just having a mile an hour, I can dodge it. But if I'm going 50 and 80 miles an hour, I can't even have a moment to think before my face is up front and close and personal with that wall.
So you need to have a judgment of what? Speed, velocity. Yes or no? So how many have been driving in cars before? You've been driving a car, right? How long have you been driving? 30 years. So you know, can you judge like if you're going a mile a minute as versus 25 miles an hour? Okay. All right. So I want you now to close your eyes. And I want you to tell me how fast the earth is rotating. Is it ro so it's not rotating? Okay. So from his perception, the, now, the earth is not rotating. All right, so if you can judge if the earth is rotating, is it moving? Do you feel it? No. You don't feel it at all. If it was rotating, which direction would it be rotating? That way. <laughs> it's rotating this. You understand? It's going. We're going. We're going from east. We're going from east to what? West. The Earth is rotating this way. The sun is going that way. That's why it sunsets over there. So as the Earth rotates, you ever wonder why they always shoot rockets in only one direction? The direction of the, ro of the rotation? Why don't they shoot it the other way? Because if they did, they would go <laughs> Because of the speed of the rotation of the Earth. That's why they always showed them, showed them, shoot them, fire them off in the same direction as the rotation. Isn't that neat? But how fast is the Earth rotating? What would your guess be, sir? What, is it, what do you feel like? Wild ass guess. What does it feel like? What do you think it is? How fast is the Earth rotating? How does it feel like? It's fast. How fast is fast? How fast is fast? How is, is it? Is it? Have you driven a car at eighty miles an hour? Yes. Is the is the is the Earth rotating that fast? No. More than that. You think so? <laughs> All right. Have you ever been in an airplane? Yes. All right. How many of you ever been in an airplane? How fast is the airplane going? Anywhere from four to seven hundred miles an hour, right? Especially unless you're in an SST, which is like twice the speed of sound, right? So at that speed, how fast does it feel you're going? How many would like to know how fast the Earth is rotating? All right, here we go. This is for we do. All right. Now we know. It, the whole Earth does one full rotation in 24 hours. Now, if we know what the circumference is in miles, then we know how fast it's going, yes or no? All we'd have to do is find the circumference, divide it by 24, we know the speed. All right, here we go. 24,000 miles. At the, sorry, at the silly conference, right? Circumference. How fast is the Earth rotating? Now, what's fascinating about this is I've asked college students, doctors, how fast the Earth is rotating. And they always say around 24 to 25 miles an hour. And these are doctors, PhDs. And I sit there in utter amazement. How fast are we going? 24,000 divided by, that's supposed to be a 24. <laughs> Somehow when I move it from one computer to another. All right, it's 24. 24 into 24,000 gives you 1,000 miles an hour. 
you were correct, but you didn't sound very confident. Do you feel like 1,000 miles an hour? That's how fast we're going. Now, how does that shake up your reality? Because if the earth stopped, the water keeps going. You better have your snorkels and fins on. Or just mush with the water. You understand the problem? If the whole earth is rotating 1,000 miles an hour, and it gets a massive coronal mass ejection that stops the earth, the water doesn't stop. It keeps on going. And the ocean is empty onto the land. All right, so has everybody got this? So 1,000 1, miles an hour. Wing, 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 wing. That's pretty damn, that's like fast. I'm here to mess up your reality, by the way. I'm trying really hard. All right. Thank you, thank you. Now, how, now we know where the Earth is going around the sun, right? How fast is it going around the sun? How long does it take us to get around it? 365 days, right? That's what you're going to say, right? 365 days, right? <laughs> All right. So if we're going around the sun and it takes us 365 days, to go around, we need to know the circumference, and we can pretty much figure out the speed. And if I told you the circumference, you would not be able to grasp it. So I'm just going to do the speed thing, OK? Because it's, it's quite large out there. So 66,600 miles an hour around the sun. So you think you're not moving? Now, when a cop pulls me, I can't resist it. He goes, how fast are you going? And if I'm going east to west, ha, ha, ha. I said, I, I couldn't help it. 1,060 1, miles an hour. The guy goes, what? <laughs> I confess. <laughs> Some of them don't find that very funny. Anyway, <laughs> I have a sense of humor despite evidence to the contrary. All right, pardon? No, I just asked him if he had a sense of humor. <laughs> it's like, I, I very seldom get tickets, you know, but there are moments. All right. For, <laughs> it's really easy to remember. Six, 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 zero, zero. Really easy to remember. Six, 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 zero, zero. That's how fast the Earth is going around the sun. Well, how much time is that? Well, that takes... 365 days, 0.256. That's why we wind up with an extra four days every four years. Or eight. That's how we wind up with a leap year. Got it? This is cool. Anyone, anyone's reality shaken yet? All right, let's try a little harder. So now we're spinning like this, 1,000 miles an hour. We're also moving like this. What? Yeah, 666,600 uh, 66, miles an hour. So we're being, going this direction, and we're going that direction, and that's it, right? Uh, no. No, that's not true. How fast does the Earth go around the sun? 66,600 miles an hour. Remember, 666. All right, how fast is the sun? Right? Moving around the center of the galaxy. Uh, where are we? We're, we're like, we're, we're right there. <laughs> that little dot right there, that's our solar system, our sun to be exact. Right. So, how fast are we moving around this black hole? And how long does it take to make one full cycle? Now, this is also traveling, which, you know, this gets so mind-blowing. But anyway, so we're spinning like a top like this. We're going 66,600 miles an hour this way. And then as the whole solar system is moving around the galaxy, 
at what speed? 45,000 miles per hour. How long does it take to go around the galaxy? You ready for this? 230 million years. Every billion, it does, it, does full, it does a full cycle every billion years, four times, every billion years. Goes around the galaxy, the central black hole. Welcome to a crash course in astronomy. So the Earth has been around for 14 billion years. No, it hasn't, five billion years, right? So how many times has it gone around the galaxy? Okay, this is exciting. Welcome to astronomy. <laughs> okay, so 45,000 miles per hour, taking about 230 million, million years, not just one million, right, to complete one full rotation around the galaxy. All right, anyone have, anyone here finally went, wow. No one yet? Okay, I got to try harder. All right, here we go. I've always wanted to be intense. You know, camping is a lot of fun. All right. Yes. Just to see if you remember everything I told you right now. Everybody got what I told you? Y'all you you got it down. Pat, right? Y'all got it down? Okay. Good. So now let's look at this actually happening as if we were like anywhere from one to ten light years out from our solar system. That's not cool? So you can see. You can see the galaxy, you can zoom into our solar system and back out. So you can see this actually in progress, right? Okay? Because we now send satellites and went, oh, oh, oh. So scientists had rude awakenings with reality as well. So don't feel sad. Remember all those books that taught you and you had images in your head? The images are wrong, right? The images are wrong. Are you ready? Now this gives you an idea of our galaxy. We're looking at another galaxy because it's identical to ours. So we're seeing it as a galaxy. And because it's flat, we get a chance to go below it and above it. But again, we're 10, year, 10 light years out. A light year is a distance light travels in one year at 186,000 miles a second. And there's our sun and its planets. That's how it moves around the galaxy. I told you it's moving, right? What did you picture in your mind? We're seeing it from different angles. <laughs> that's that's us right there. <laughs> you ever feel dizzy? You know, on one day I wake up dizzy. Maybe you're in tune to what's going on. <laughs> and it's doing it how fast? How fast is the sun moving around the galaxy? Now this is called a helix, right? Just like your DNA is made. It's called a helix. That's spiraling. Each planet is producing its own helix. The sun is going around. And as our, as our galaxy moves, our sun is making the same helix with the galaxy as it moves through space. This is compounding helixes within each other. You're, I have introduced you to reality. Each star is a solar system all by itself. That's the, the stars in each system. That's how many. So if our sun, if you're watching it about, you know, 10 light years out or maybe one light year out, then that's the the helix that the, the corona that the earth, that the sun has, because we sent out our probes out beyond it. And we realized, oh my gosh, the sun's moving. 
And the scientists kind of knew it, but they didn't really know it. And in the center of the galaxy is a black hole. No, we're going around it. Like the moon going around the Earth. We're, pull, we're pulling out from a distance. All right, now you see, does that help you understand? Give yourselves an applause for your new reality. All right, did that help you see that what you know is reality, what you accept is reality, is not what? Now, what have you got to do now? You can say, oh, that's an exception. No, that's reality. Now you've got to redo it in your brain. You've got to reset it to what is right. Does that make sense? So whatever images you have, have now got to be what? Replaced. Just like when you go to a place you've never been before. You've got it, and that's why you're so exhausted all the time when you're driving. It's like you go to a place you've never been before because your brain's trying to map it and reproduce it in your mind. That's why you're always so tired from driving, unless you've been there before. Then you're not so tired. So that's for your, so you don't get tired. Let's have a refreshment, and let's take a what? Break. <laughs>